Welcome back to another episode of Cheapskate Nation. Today's episode is going to be a little bit different. We got ourselves a riding lawnmower that we're going to be working on because, as some of you may know, we bought a bigger house with a bigger property with a lot more lawn to cut. And last year, she was smoking belts. But I think I figured out why she smoked the belts. We'll get into that later. But for now, let's grab a drink, grab a whiskey, and let's dive into the situation. All along the back here, I got hills and rough terrain all up in there and comes back down through there and it's a little bit hard on this mower when I'm riding it mowing the lawn and it's got to go up and down these things at a low speed but once I get this uh, mower done we're gonna go ahead and get started on that small trailer over there I'll show you let me show you that real quick now this small trailer my idea behind it was to build like a off-road camp trailer and you can see I got my new car trailer back there. Got the Camaro that's going to get an LS swap. That's coming. But we're going to do some rails about yay tall. Camp stove right in the center. Big cover. Big cover over the top of it. It'll be pretty neat. I'm just a guy with big dreams. But let's dive into the mower and let's get that in, done, and out of the way. So last year as I was pulling hills and stuff and at low speed with the wagon on the back, all of a sudden my drive belt started really slipping and I was like, what the heck's going on here? So come to find out, my crankshaft seal on the bottom of the engine, that's leaking oil. Because what it's doing is it's coming down out of the bottom of the engine, hitting the pulleys that are there, and you'll see later in the video, and it's flinging all over the place i mean i had washed this thing up after that just to find out what was going on with it but it was flinging oil everywhere and when i just drained the oil not a whole lot came out so it was low on oil too but just because you got a bad crankshaft seal doesn't mean you need to ditch your rider and go out and get a new one so the first thing that i did is i got i went and I went ahead and i drained the oil it's an air-cooled engine briggs and britain strat it's an air-cooled briggs and stratton 12 and a half horsepower engine uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to get the tank pretty empty because what we're going to do is we're going to end up standing this up on end so that way I can work right here where I need to work. So what I got going on here is I got the rider hooked up to my engine hoist. I'm going to bring it up. If you don't have an engine hoist but you got a set of ramps on your tailgate of your truck, you can drive it right up on the, on the ramps and crawl underneath there and work on it. I'm too lazy for that. I just want to lift it up and get it done. I just want to get you up in here real quick and show you how oily and everything else is under here. And uh, any machine that was running right wouldn't be that dirty under there at all. And you can really see back in there, that's where it was flinging the majority of the oil. So that oil coming around off this pulley right here, that's the drive pulley. This is the mower deck pulley coming off that and flinging all the way back in there, down in there. So we gotta get this off first. Oh, one other thing I wanted to just mention, you're probably gonna need a big puller set up like this. And as you can see, I'm not working with much room on it, but we're gonna go ahead and hit it with the impact and just see if it pops off. There she goes. Bam, right now, perfect. So we got this pulley comes off first. And that's got like a stamped keyway into it. And then we got this, uh, looks like a bronze bushing. It's got some Teflon peony crap in there. But back behind here is where we got our seal that we got to get out. Well, one thing I always like to do is I like to take a look at the seal right there before I actually try to pull out the old one. And you know what? Let's eyeball it up. That looks like it's the uh, right one. So we're gonna figure out how to press this in there real quick. This is gonna take some figuring. So here's a trick that I learned a long time ago. Has about a 60% success rate. 
and about a 20% piss you off rate. But is what you do is you take this sheet, uh, wood screw and you just thread it into the side of the seal all, and you pull it in and out in multiple places and then you can pop the seal out. It gives you something to grab onto. I'll show you once I get it started. So as what I've done is I've drilled the screw into it. And then you could just kind of, might have to go to the other side too, but you can kind of twist it. And then the threads of the screw will just kind of pull that seal right out. Real, real slow. So after you get, get the uh, old seal out, you just want to make sure it's good and clean in there, in which it looks great up in there. And then uh, put a little bit of silicone around the crank to help the, uh, you can use navel jelly too. Not navel jelly, petroleum jelly. Uh, to go around there, but you can also, if you wanted to, you can RTV the sides of the uh, seal if you wanted to. It looks like I have a questionable nick in there. So I might put a little bit on there, probably not though. So I went ahead and ran some silicone, uh, heavy duty silicone lubrication around the inside ring. And that's what I'm gonna use to put on there. And somebody's calling me great. I'm gonna have to refilm this clip. So I got the new seal there in there. You can use anything long that comes out to about here. Just tap it in there. And, uh, yeah, save your old rider from the scrap pile. That's what you can do. So I'm pretty much ready to put this thing back together now, but I'm going to hold off. I'm going to wait. Since I got it this far apart, I might as well put a new drive belt on it. We already know that the old one smoked. And that way we can make sure that this thing's going to run good. We're also going to take some time to sharpen the blade, but I'm not going to film that. We're just going to do it. So... We can watch the struggle with me and new blade. Here, I'll be right back. Well, after further inspection of the drive belt, it looks like what we're going to have to do is drop the whole mower down, undo the pins on the deck, drop the deck off of it, and then lift it back up. That way we can get access to taking out the drive belt. Then after I do that, I'm going to call around to see if any of my local auto parts stores has a drive belt. Hopefully one does. I don't know, it's going to be a little, it's going about to get a little involved.
Well, I got the perfect color assortment. I got some rose gold, whatever this color is, and some satin white. They're all got about a quarter of a can in them, so we're gonna see how far we can make it. Oh, beautiful. got the new belts on it uh, it involves a lot of springs and whatnot I'm not gonna get into detail of it because every lawnmower is just about different and but the only thing that I do want to say is that if you're having a hard time getting the spring to stretch back to where it needs to go you can bend it and stick washers in between each coil of the spring and if you put enough of them in there it'll eventually grow the spring out so it'll make it easier to stretch it where it needs to be stretched to um, the only other thing that I want to say about it is be careful. It's a spring. When you're, it could slip. It could come back, hit you in the face, hit you in the eye. Uh, they could, they've been known to do some serious damage. So, at least, the very least, maybe gloves and definitely safety glasses when you're working with springs. There's a lot of stored energy there that you have to retention everything to make it go back on. So just be careful. Um, I'm about done with this thing. I'm, I'm gonna throw the mower deck back on it and. Uh, Put some oil in it, and then we'll be all uh, all set to test fire it out and see what happens. I mean, hopefully there's no more leaky oil. That would be uh, that'd be the best scenario. I don't think it's gonna leak. It was uh, it all went way too easy. And just real quick on this mower, the reason why I love it is it's a belt drive system. It just got a gearbox down here. Uh, most of your modern day mowers, they're gonna be uh, hydrostatic and uh, that's basically your drive belt up here is going to be turning a pump or the whole transaxle down here that's a that's a pump and uh, all it is for forward and reverse you're switching a valve on it uh, this is actually a transmission it has gears in there to make it all work here's the shifter and there, up there I don't I'm not gonna I don't know all too much about it but I ain't gonna get in too much detail since I don't know too much but it's geared ease of use uh, the hydrostatics are just a lot easier and simpler to use. Um, personally, I just prefer this style myself. And that's why I'm keeping this old girl in good health and good shape and doing the maintenance, doing the work on it, so that way it can last me a couple more years. Let's try to get 
It's uh, 2024 now. Let's try to get uh, at least six more seasons out of it. And then we'll buy something new. Or rebuild something new. Who knows? Well, we got her all back together now. Down on the ground, sitting like she should be. We had a flat tire go, or a tire go flat on us in the middle of uh, doing everything. And I had to get out the old uh, slime, fill it up. And uh, it's holding there so far. I also added a new headlight right down there. Check this thing out. That was like $14.99 off Amazon, a four pack of them. So, and it works. Check this out. Boom. Look at that. My mower makes a smiley face now. I'll be dipped. So, yeah, here we go. We're going to fire it up and see what happens. Uh-oh. Here was some throttle. A little choke. Oh, there she goes. As always guys thanks for watching thanks for subscribing and uh, thanks for sharing my videos I really appreciate it that's gonna conclude this video but maybe next time we'll do some more donuts until then stay cheap